Hello all. This presentation is meant to provide you with some local ideas and a set of curated resources toward developing CV documents that you can draw on as you respond to academic job postings while you're doing an academic job search. Let's start with the idea of experience, and specifically here with Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced? Recorded and released in 1967, just as Hendrix was entering into the world of music, this album marked his unique space. In music, he was doing things with a guitar that no one else had thought to do, creating a musical sound from specific knowledge, skills, performances, and compositions he uniquely created. So yes, he was uniquely experienced with a unique professional story to tell, as are you. Hendrix is reported to have said that in the lyrics of Are You Experienced, that he hoped to convey the importance of taking time to view yourself by looking at your life from the outside, as supporters might see you, as you might see yourself in moments of feeling at peace with yourself. This is an apt description for the type of context you want to create as you begin drafting a CV, con CV document. In this academic context, I'd add, that like a musician needed to create a team to produce a soundtrack, you will need to work in a collaboration with other people, with people who care about you and your work, who can help you step outside of yourself to tell your academic life story. Well, at least the story that began to unfold with your undergraduate education and its closing. The story that your CV needs to tell is a true story, where true is about correctly lining up the elements of your CV document so that the details of your work align with the position announcement, the requirements, and the college or university's institutional, historical, and community context. This true story sets out the broad context of what you've done as an academic the knowledge you've gained, the skills you've developed, the abilities you've honed in using the knowledge and skills together, the leadership you've provided within your university and outside of it, the research focus and its development, likely through collaboration and often also expressed in teaching innovations. While the CV you create is going to list several things about your academic story, how you tell that story also matters. It shows your communication skills and your interpersonal skills. How does it show this? Through the words you choose, how you set up headings, verb choices, the tone that you convey as you describe your roles and responsibilities. These are all verbal cues. This is the body language of a written document as you set out your accomplishments, but also set out who you are and how you developed as a human being to tell this story. Just a bit ago, I mentioned that each college or university has an institutional, historical, and community context. You can learn more about this, especially the institutional context, via the Carnegie Classification of Institutions, the URL showing up on this slide. In all, there are four general categories, a research institution like the University of Minnesota, a liberal arts institution like McAllister over in St. Paul, a comprehensive university like Hamlin or Minnesota's state university system, and a community college. The four different types require different versions of research, teaching, and service. If we look at a research university and a community college, you'll see some of the differences. In a research university and in the job postings that you'll see for positions at research universities, you will often see that expertise and requirements are built around research followed by teaching and service. Increasingly, research universities are looking for people who are teaching ready, even if they haven't had teaching experience, though the emphasis remains on research. 
at a community college, the emphasis on teaching and then service and then research. Often that service at a community college is locally within the university itself and also in the nearby community. Why know these things? If you set up a CV that puts research at the very top is the first thing someone sees and you're applying for a community college job, you will generally lose that person's attention. And in its reverse thinking, if for a research university you put teaching up front, you're going to probably lose the attention of people who are looking to understand your research skills, capacity, capabilities, and future direction. Let's turn our attention now to creating a CV. In creating our CV, our advice is really to create at least two distinct documents, a static and a dynamic document. The static document is akin to gathering your entire musical collection into a single physical or digital space. The static document includes everything you've done or created that could be pertinent to your planned and potential career paths. This isn't a listy list. You're going to want, start, want to start making use of vivid verbs, record accurate descriptions of roles, the who, what, when, where, and start writing pithy descriptions of your responsibilities, what, how, and why. When you're generating that static document, you want to think big from A to Z, as implied by the chart here. You want to start to think of the different ways you might word headings for major sections, and those will be guided by those three roles, research, teaching, service. Teaching, research, service, depending on the institutional type. When you are generating that static document then, you want to begin adding in all the things you do, all the things you've accomplished. Go back to old calendars and emails to find details about presentations, professional development activities, academic service on or beyond campus, in and outside of your field. You want to develop an organization within, within the sections, maybe overall by chronology, with the most recent first, or maybe by categories. For example, some presentations are conference papers, some are invited presentations, some are abstracts. Again, you want to think as you're beginning to build this static document about the who, what, when, where, why, and how of things that you did online and in person that contributed to your development as an academic professional and where you contributed to academic worlds, lives, and ideas. And with this slide, we're shifting into the dynamic CV, which is like the playlist that you develop from that static, really large music collection, really large academic, true and strong story that you've collected in a static CV. So we're talking dynamic here. And in talking dynamic, what you're going to think about is how you pull together from that static material, a dynamic document that's developed to align with the job post specifics, the institutional type, and some linked context, which might include um, the kinds of future directions that they would like this candidate to be taking. In doing that CV organization, again, I want to emphasize that how you pull together this dynamic one is Controlled is guided, should be guided by both the job advertisement and what you can learn about the institution itself. Is it a research university, a community college, a liberal arts or comprehensive university? Within that Carnegie uh, resource I shared, you can even look for specific institutions to find out more about them. So if I'm applying for a research job at a research institution or a research driven job, I am going to organize my CV 
to tell the research story first and address all the unique things about research that that job position announcement calls for. Then I'm going to address teaching and then I'm going to address service. If I'm applying for that community college job, I'm going to put my teaching up front and make sure I name in my teaching the kinds of responsibilities I've held that meet their job requirements and their job recommendations. And then I'm going to talk about service and research. Because academic and non-academic institutions, fields, and departments are unique, there are CV variations. Sometimes you'll be asked to submit a business type resume. Other times you'll be asked to submit what are called industry, C industry CVs or academic resumes. Rather than get into the weeds here in this presentation and provide you with details of each, I've added targeted resources into the resource document that you will be able to access in the Google folder that accompanies this presentation. For the remainder of this presentation, I'll share with you images of CVs. These will help provide a quick visual cue about key aspects of CV development. Rather than have you scrutinize these particular slides, we have created that Google folder with resources to support you in the development of your CVs. In that folder, you will find three examples that are linked to recent successful searches conducted by recent graduate students who have allowed us to share their documents. I've included that URL in a typed note here, and I'll say it aloud as well. The URL is z.umn.edu slash CV Resources Grad School. All of that is one word. So again, z.umn.edu slash followed by this phrase is one word, CV Resources Grad School. The next five slides set out some key ideas. The first of these is to create a document that's easy to scan. And we mean that in two ways. It needs to be easy to scan visually, and it also needs to be easy to scan in um, opti optical character recognition, converting something that might be a photographic image or a PDF image into something that can be scanned with assistive technology. So you want to have a document that's clean. The one on the left is an example of something that you might find in an academic resume. On the right, it's more of a CV. In both cases, the authors have tried to set up something that my eyes or your eyes can move down. It's easy to move. There are ample margins. They've used 12 point type. And for the most part, they've put things together so that I can add notes those margins, or if it's a PDF document, I could add a sticky note of my own. They've also made sure that I can distinguish between a heading for education and a subheading that might follow. They've also made sure that I can easily find information about how to contact the person, and I know on the front page what they think my position is about and how they're tailoring or making this dynamic document to suit those purposes. Professional experience on the left is right away research experience higher up on the document on the right. All of this makes it easy to scan. My eyes can move around on the front page and take in basic information. And in these two documents, I want to call attention to the use of parallel construction. That is, the elements are the same for things that are in common. On the left, the writer sets up parallel headings, gray boxes, and capital letters. Underneath what's parallel are the ways the person will set out their jobs. A description on the left, the dates on the right, 
some key roles named on some key achievements listed. Overall, this is more of a resume than a CV document. On the right, the writer uses a CV mode and is again careful to set out parallel elements. They name the position, they name where it was, they name the place, and again, some attributes about roles and responsibilities as well as dates are listed. These constructions remain the same throughout each of their documents. Let me add to this by pointing out that both of these documents show a bit of a problem with scan. Each has top margins that are too small and right margins that are also too small. Again, it's probably better to have a longer CV and let your readers have a restful read as they scan your document. Location matters. That's part of the point in thinking about the institutional type and the job search and what it sets out. The first thing that's listed in a job search advertisement is about teaching. That's a cue that teaching is probably what you want to put up top. If it says research, that's the cue for putting research. Again, think about location as you develop your CV. Let's look at these two examples specifically. The example on the left is meant to be shared broadly within a research setting. The training through education and research points are listed first, and the teaching experience follows to demonstrate that this person will be a quick starter in meeting the teaching role expectations. The writer tells us about her academic experience and the several different roles she has taken to show the comprehensive span of her academic experience. Exactly what that advertised position noted is required. She's made sure to lay those things out. From this, the reader can turn to the pages that follow for a fuller story. The one on the right puts a recently completed funded project opportunity up front with educational and teaching experience on either side, as this position called for someone with teaching experience who is also positioned to take on research responsibilities for an emerging project. Were I to write an informal heading for this slide, it would be use your words. The one on the left is what most job search committees would call a listy list. It works a bit like a listing of tracks on a CD or a sequence of turns and maneuvers you're following in a virtual map. The writer of the first document uses their words in the program development section about midway in the view, but not so much elsewhere and the parallel construction falls off in the professional experience section. On either side of these two segments, I see only lists and not a person who's doing or has done the work. As a reader, I will have to think about how, I will have to think hard about how and whether the items listed align with the job call. With the example on the right, a reader might be thinking as I did, oh, that's what he did, and that would be useful here. Again, use your words. Use strong verbs to describe what you did. Use active language to show you doing the work and use parallel construction and an easy scan to help people move through and take in your story. And finally, this would seem obvious, but it's not always. Format entries for publications and conference materials and other academic materials you've created or co-created as you would a citation in your field. As you make decisions about whether to abbreviate journal titles or use acronyms for organizations, keep this in mind. Most job search committees include at least one person whose work is outside whatever might be most relevant in your field or your area of expertise. Don't make them work too hard to make sense of your academic story by giving them a jargon-filled listing, alphabet soup listing of organizations and journal titles. As we close, remember this. Whatever your experience, whatever document you're creating, whether it's the whole musical collection in a static CV, or that more tailored playlist 
for a dynamic CV in a specific context. You'll be writing a document that needs to follow rhetorical conventions linked to organization, and you'll need to be attentive to making rhetorical choices. Use your words. Do all of this to show your audience who you are by showing how your academic story aligns with that job posting.